So the piece I've written for this is called A Prayer at the Edge of Silence. Uh, it's kind of a, a big string quartet. Um, probably one of the biggest pieces I've written in the last few years. Um, and it's in multiple movements, so I either tend to do one big movement or many smaller movements. And this is a many smaller movements piece. Um, each of these movements is focused on one kind of feeling, a sort of a meditation on an emotion or a way of feeling. They're all different and they all have their own little um, thing that they're trying to explore. Like the first movement's really fast and kind of almost folksy, um, but I always think of that famous Haydn Fitz quartet that everybody did for their A-levels and things like that that is just burned into your brain. So um, that's really interesting, because right at the beginning, you say you asked us to play in a style somewhere between Haydn and bluegrass. Yeah. So like how much other music, aside from string quartets, how much other music feeds you into your compositional voice? Oh, I think loads of stuff. I mean, mainly I listen to like just almost exclusively heavy metal <laughs> and thrash metal, <laughs> you know, so, but I, you know, there's, um, there are interesting ways to kind of think of how that's implemented. The common texture in like a lot of thrash metal is a repeated musical idea in the one guitar, in the one speaker, and then a bunch of power chords in the other speaker. Mm -hmm. And I think we do get a similar texture in a lot of this music. So I think like that's where that kind of comes from a little bit. But yeah, with the, with the bluegrass thing as well, um, I don't know, I was listening to a lot of country music at the time, and I just watched Fievel Goes West, which makes me sound like ridiculous <laughs> saying that. This piece. But the orchestration in that film is outrageously good. Like the, um, I don't know whether I should say this because it makes me sound not very good, but I've ripped that film off so many times for orchestration. There's all these oboe lines that kind of stutter into the music and it's needlessly kind of thoughtful for that kind of Hollywood cinematic experience. Right, yeah. I don't like to take anything off the table. I like to make sure that everything has its place in well, everything that I find interesting is allowed in. Absolutely. You know, you don't want to kind of shut the door on anything. So from there, I went to Bluegrass and I got a bunch of Bluegrass books and I was kind of like building it up from there. Uh -huh. and, and I, I think that movement is kind of probably the, the, the kind of wildest and fastest. Um, the second and the fourth movements uh, have this kind of yearning quality. Um, I, I like this idea of writing pieces that are kind of like praise. And I've done, I've done uh, quite a few of them, but I've never been able to do one in a string quartet before, yeah. so I really wanted to make sure I had a really, really good look at that. Um, the third movement is, I think that's kind of uh, probably the strangest one of the piece, where it's all based around these open string ideas. It's all based on the key of G, D and A, where you're just playing these kind of big, really full, kind of rich canons. Um, I guess that's kind of like a homage to famous string repertoire, you know, like Beethoven's Concerto, I think, was in D. Should have checked that before I tried to say that on yes. the video. <laughs> I think Stravinsky's was based around D as well. And like the Ligeti and the Unsuk Chin Concertos. I mean, like, it's the part and parcel of the whole thing, right? So like, um, yeah, I wanted to kind of do something with that. Um, and the final movement is the weird one, I think. That's the one where it goes a bit off the rails a bit more. One of the reasons I wanted to kind of also depart from the form of the piece earlier on is just to see where it takes you. Because I think those are the moments that you kind of want to catch when you're writing something. Is that weird stuff that you wouldn't have thought of otherwise. You know, because the default thing when you're composing something sometimes is just to get something on the page. There was a, I can't remember the name of him, but a Simpsons writer said like, uh, before he, he would get the draft done before he goes to bed, regardless of how it looked. Yeah. Because it's, once it's written, it, you can start rewriting it. Yeah. And like, I also feel similarly like that, you know, where it's like the hardest thing is just getting Commit into an idea, and then after that, you can find the nuance and the different paths and uh, look at where the extra excitement is. So, this piece you've written us is part of um, Beethoven Bartok Now Pioneers, um, and it's interesting, I suppose, for contemporary composers um, often being forced to look back at the composers before them, and especially when you're writing a string quartet. Um, I know that the composers that straight away followed Beethoven found that difficult because of the enormity of what he'd done with the genre. Um, how do you find that looking back at historical works when you're presented with um, or when you're asked to write a new piece? Hard. <laughs> I think, um, yeah, you know, there's an enormous weight that comes with it. And especially now, I think we're thinking about uh, history differently to how we thought about it previously. And the more you learn about some of these historical figures as well, the more daunting it becomes I think because um, you know like Bartok and Beethoven were both complete virtuosos on their instruments and um, played this kind of crazy material 
So for me, it's often that I'll be very, very deep in a lot of stuff, just reading everything I can and researching everything and just like listening to as much string quartet music as I can. And then you just got to forget about it, I think. Mm. You know, I worry that like in trying to, trying to be like someone else, I fall short of being them and both being my own kind of compositional mm. thing. No, it's good to have um, all sorts of responses to it, be that, you know, one that goes and delves into a certain moment of a piece or be that, you know, using it as a springboard to go and write your own thing.